not to, oof, I'm gonna be quite honest here, like, I generally don't really do them, is out of proportion. <laughs> Hello, beautiful people of the internet. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, hello, I'm Emma. It is great to meet you. I would love it if you would subscribe. Today is gonna be kind of a q and I did two videos on studying at Leiden University. One was also according, because of a question, kind of how to get into the school, and the other one was just kind of like what it's like to study at Leiden University, because I think, yeah, you guys just kind of want to know. I think that probably comes from Leiden University being very unclear in on their website and not giving very much information about what it's like to study here, which can be tough if you're an international and you never get to visit the campus at all. So I'm here to answer all your questions. <laughs> if you hear something rumbling in the background, by the way, it's probably my dish dishwasher. So. Just try to ignore that. All right, so the first question is, what does a first year timetable look like? Now I can't really show you one because I'm a second year and I tried to look for my first year timetable but it's not really there anymore and I didn't take pictures of them, obviously. But I can kind of explain to you what it will look like because I do, of course, kind of remember what it was like. So to start out, you can have classes, just generally not only in the first year always, at either 9 a.m., 11 a.m., 1 p.m., 3 p.m., 5 p.m., or if you're really unlucky, 7 p.m., which doesn't happen often, but it happens sometimes. But in the first year, generally it doesn't really happen, so just kind of discard that one. But yeah, so as you can tell by that, every class will be two hours, you will have 45 minutes, 15 minute break and then 45 minutes again. So I guess like an hour and a half, but you know, they take up like a block of two hours each. The timetable that I'm going to explain is specific to international studies and it can be very different if you're doing another BA because international studies generally is very different from how other BAs or structures at Leiden University, even the other international ones. But yeah, it'll, it'll be really different if you're not gonna do international studies. So in my first semester, or basically in everyone's first semester, and actually generally in every semester, you'll have five classes. So I remember having two 9 a.m.s in my first semester of my first year, but there were also people that had more than that. No one had less though, because basically my 9 a.m.s were lectures that you have with your whole year, so everyone has to attend to them. So everyone has the same 9 a.m.s on those same days. And then what happens is the rest will be kind of, besides the general lectures that you have, which will be, f if they structure it the same way, it'll be four. And then besides those, you'll have five tutorials. So five classes and for four classes, you'll have lectures. And for all five, you'll have tutorials, if that makes any sense. So lectures will be every single week. Tutorials will be every other week throughout the whole first year. This will change in your second and your third year, but in your first year you'll have tutorials every other week. Like I said, these lectures will be general. They will be with everyone from, this, from the year, so everyone will have those lectures at the same time. Then for the tutorials, the groups will be way smaller. It's generally like 15 people, and everyone will have those tutorials at different times with different tutors. The first semester, you're you'll get your schedule made by the university so you don't really have any choice in when you have your classes. You can be really lucky. I remember that people didn't have any class on Friday in the first semester in the first year, which now I have to because I can make my own schedule. And so I always try to aim for Fridays off. And this semester I also have some Thursdays off, but that's because the further you get along, the less classes you'll have. Um, but I remember having a 11 a.m. every Friday and every other Friday it would be a 9 a.m. which would kind of be annoying because if there would be any parties on Thursday I would have to sit there, like I would have to go to the 9 a.m. and like all my friends would have Fridays off or they would just start at 1 which is kind of like I mean yeah that's I mean that just comes with the territory but it is kind of annoying when your friends have Fridays off and you don't so that's why I always try to keep my Fridays off but yeah <laughs> that's besides the point so your tutorials will be at different times depending on which group you're in and these can be at any given moment throughout the week 
and like I said, uh, every other week. Another thing that might be interesting to know is that a semester consists of 12 weeks of classes. This is taking out study week before finals and finals and midterms week. So with those, you'll have 15 weeks of a semester generally, I think. I think they might run a little longer, a little shorter, but that's about the time span that a semester will be, which is quite short. Um, and that makes the study quite high pressure because you have to do a lot of things in very little time. Yeah. Second semester, same thing. You'll have general lectures with everybody. That's just fixed times. But then you'll have... And actually, you'll still have tutorials every other week. The only difference is that you'll have chosen your region by now, which means you'll have chosen your language by now, and your language will be in your schedule, which is three times a week, every single week, which is a lot. I'll come back later to how much time you'll be spending on, on your language, but yeah, so then you kind of have the same thing as the semester before, lectures every week, tutorials every other week for every class, and then but then your language three times a week, every single week with also obviously like midterms and finals and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of what it looks like. I hope this made it any clear. Maybe if I watch this back, I'm like, I don't even understand what I'm saying, but I really hope this helped. All right, next question. As I said before, we're gonna go on to language now. Someone asked, how much time will you be spending on your language? And I'm just gonna be super honest with you guys. You're gonna be spending so much time on your language, like so much time. Three times a week, two hours is already a lot. And then especially if you start from beginners with, with the language, which most people do, you have to study so much outside of that, which for me, and I'm not alone in this, I think the amount of time that you spend on your language is out of proportion with what the course is supposed to be about. So the whole thing is that they, when you start at beginners, they want to get you to a certain level. And so they go through things really quickly. And honestly, you like have no time to breathe ever. It's like so high pressure, it's kind of crazy. And I feel like most people, are more so surviving than they are thriving when it comes to the language. Although this obviously really depends on the person. I just know for myself that I wasn't really thriving. I was just surviving. And I'm also dyslexic, so that makes it a little bit harder for me than it would be for just anybody. But even if you're not dyslexic, it's, it's quite a lot. There are exceptions to this. For example, if you do pre-intermediate of a certain language, like if you would already speak Spanish, which some of my friends did, and you take pre-intermediate Spanish, it's a lot easier because, yeah, I mean, they just have it a lot easier. Although then I also have a friend in pre-intermediate French who has so much to do. It's, there's not a lot of coordination either between like the different language departments. So one, like department, the people in that will be struggling a lot and then the other one will not be struggling at all because they have it way easier or they don't have to do as much. But yeah, don't let, don't get scared off by this because a lot of people just do it in three semesters and they're fine. For me, I failed my Spanish last semester, so I'll have to retake it, which is what happens if you fail a class, you have to retake it the next year in that semester, which is also fine. Like there's enough people that do that. There's no, don't worry about that if that ever happens. But yeah, um, how much time do you spend on your language? I'd say too much, but that just depends on whether you like learning languages or not. And if you like learning them in a classroom setting, because that's also obviously different from if you like learning them, just kind of how I learned English is through like watching a lot of shows and reading books and listening to music, which is very, in a very different way. Next question is how does the area choosing process go? This again is specific to international studies. If you're going to study this, you probably know that you will have to specialize in a certain area. My area of specialty is North America and with your area, you have to choose a language. I could choose between French and Spanish and I'm doing Spanish because I am terrible at French. I took it in high school, awful, just hor horrible. I'm so bad at it. I wish I could speak it because a ton of my friends are French or speak French and I would love to just kind of like jump in on the conversation when they're saying things, but unfortunately for now, that's not, not in my near future. So 
Basically, you choose your area in the first semester of the first year, midway through. What happens is, like I said, you come here, you get your schedule from the university, and from there on out, every semester, you have to make your schedule yourself. I'm not gonna get into explaining that because honestly, like, I thought it was so confusing at first, but then when you do it, it it's actually quite easy and it's just easier to figure out once you're here. So just, you know, you know that, but just don't worry about that. That'll come once you come here, but you have to make your own schedule. And there's like one certain time that you kind of sign up for your classes. And when you do that, you just kind of sign up for the classes of the area that you have to take that semester. So for me, semester two was history of North America. That was our area class that we had to do that semester. And I just signed up for history of North America. And then I signed up for Spanish. And that's kind of how you choose your area. So it's not like an official paper you have to fill out. And honestly, like after you do that, you can still change your mind. I mean, you'd have to cha possibly change your schedule. So it might not be as nice as you want it to be but yeah it's not like an official sort of you sign like a paper and you're just like i'm choosing this area it's just you sign up for the classes that you need to take and that and from there on you're kind of enrolled in an area next question is how do we get assessed meaning what kind what do we get grades for like presentations essays tests, stuff like that. Your main grade will come from a midterm and a final, which both those grades together will make up for 70% of your final grade for that class. The other 30% will come from your tutorial grade. So generally every tutorial will give 10% for participation, which means you participate during class, you like jump in on discussions. If the teacher asks a question, you raise your hand and answer the question and you do the readings that are required for that tutorial yada 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 all that kind of stuff and then the other 20 percent generally comes from an essay and or a presentation which really depends on the class usually there's an essay involved somewhere they love just giving us a ton of essays to write um which is a thing that you do i i mean i like it i like writing i mean i don't I like it as far as I, I can, you know? It depends also on the class whether it's an interesting subject or not. Usually you can kind of choose, but like for me, if I have to write an essay for economics, I'm generally not gonna like writing the essay because I just don't really like economics in general as a class. N none of the, you know? So that, it just depends. But yeah, essays and then presentations are just in-class presentations. Sometimes it's just a small presentation for like five minutes, which will be part of your participation grade. And sometimes it's a more significant presentation that will count for like 10%. Or there are classes where like you don't do an essay and you just full 20% is a presentation. But that hardly ever happens. So that's kind of how we get assessed generally. And then for your language, you'll just have tests. Like I know for Spanish, we'd have a PAC. They just call it that. We'd have two of those, both of them seven and a half percent. Then we'd have a midterm, we'd have a final. And within that, we would have like listening and reading. And then you would have a separate oral exam, which is that's it for Spanish. But that also really depends on which language you're taking, because some languages do like small, smaller tests every week, others just have the midterm and the final, and no tests in between, like it really depends. So yeah, that's kind of how the grading goes and as far as like assignments and tests that we have to do and, and we have to take. Now, this question I already answered in the comments, but I just wanted to touch on it really quickly. It's someone who wanted to know how long does it take to graduate? So the BA is three years. So the idea is that you graduate in three years, but it's not really, it's not uncommon to take a fourth year, depending on whether you pass all your classes the first time. Like if you have to retake some classes, sometimes you need like an extra semester or because of internship opportunities or just like there can be so many reasons sometimes because you also live far away from home if you're an international. So sometimes there's people that like need to go home for an emergency and then you just miss a lot. So then you would have to retake like the whole sem like there's so many circumstances that can get you to have to take a fourth year. And honestly, it's like no big deal. But yeah, the idea is that you'll graduate in three years. All right. Next question is kind of long, so I'm just going to read it. I have like my laptop here with my notes. It says, I was wondering about the student cultural associations or activities like sports club or music club. Uh, are they as diverse as the campus in Leiden has them? And then she also asked 
do you do your studies require any contact with the Leiden University in Leiden or do you spend all your time just studying in The Hague? Okay, so the first part of this. I quickly touched on this or I partially touched on this in my what's it like to study at Leiden University video. So if you haven't seen that, totally check that out because I talk a lot about like committees that are at the at our school that kind of like are related to our study that you can participate in and that organize events and I kind of explain that whole thing so if you want to know more about that check that out there then for the sports parts it's definitely not as diverse as in Leiden so in Leiden they have this whole big sports cen center this like student sports center that will have basically any sport you can you can think of they'll have like dance classes they have tennis they'll have like soccer all that kind of stuff but here we don't have that. We are free to use it because we are part of Leiden University and it is a sports center for everyone from Leiden University. But generally, if you live in The Hague, you're not gonna go by train to Leiden to use that center. I think it is used by the students that study here in The Hague but live in Leiden, but those are ge generally the Dutch students, not really like the international students. So what people do here is they either like sign up for a gym, like a lot of people have a gym membership. I have a gym membership, but I'm quitting that because there's also people that sign up for sports clubs that are unrelated to university so I take dance classes I recently started that which is like totally unrelated to um, to the university I just kind of found that on my own which is fun it has been a lot more fun than the gym I the gym is not really my thing but you know everyone whatever suits you there's people that just go running outside obviously like sports are kind of found if you want to do actual sports, they're found outside and unrelated to our campus here in The Hague. Although they are planning on building like a similar sports center here as they have in Leiden. But I mean, I honestly don't know how long that's going to take. The campus that we are on now it took like four years for them to, them to build. So I don't, I don't think I'll see that sports center. But maybe if you guys come... You come after me, obviously. Maybe you guys will, so. And then the second part of that question, our studies really don't require any contact with the campus in Leiden or the students that study in Leiden. All our classes are given here in The Hague. The only reason that you'd have to be there is either if you do honors college and you have to take classes that are in Leiden, which a lot of people do tend to do, honors college I mean, and so therefore go to Leiden. And in your third year, if you don't go abroad and you don't do an internship, you'll do a minor. And if you choose to do your minor at Leiden University, it could be that you'll do your minor at the campus in Leiden. So those are the only reasons that you would have to go there and be in contact. I mean, honestly, it's not that bad. Like, I've, you know, you can travel up and down quite easily. Like, train ride is literally nine minutes. It's super close, so. But yeah, generally, especially like in your first year, you probably won't ever go there at all. Okay, so the last thing that I'm going to touch on is the quality of the lectures. This, is, this wasn't really a question, or it was, it was more of kind of like a, could you tell me something about the quality of the lectures? Which I totally can. Um, they're fine. What can I say? I'm not gonna tell you that they're the best lectures in the world because they're probably not. I don't think they are, but they're fine. So for me, I like to watch recordings of lectures because in a big lecture hall, I'll get distracted. And also like you can't, when you rewatch it, you can pause it, which makes, allows me to take very like detailed notes of every single word the lecturer says which some people say you shouldn't do that but for me it just works the best and for me that way every lecture so far has been fine actually like i've passed all my classes that way i think and then the ones that i will say that i haven't found that good were most of my economics lectures partially because they just weren't that good and then partially because as i've said before i don't really like economics so i'm not like the most interested student so maybe that probably also plays a big part in it but i'm not the only one that thought those were the best my favorite lectures that i have i will say my best lecture so far has been my north american history and i think everyone in that north american history class will agree that that lecturer was just amazing he was so good like i am obsessed with him he was like my favorite lecturer ever and we had a great tutor with it who's also my tutor for my elective which is really great for me because i love them both and i love how they like give the class and 
yeah, that was like an amazing lecture. And I think it also really translates into grades. I think no one filled that class or I'm not gonna say no one because that's quite a stretch. There's always people that like tend like make it work. They'll fill the class <laughs> even if the lecture is amazing. There are actually like quite a few good lectures and then there's quite a few terrible ones. Honestly, like it really depends on how you like your lecture structure. The ones that I love are because the lecturers structure the lectures in a way that make me understand and make me make it easy for me to take notes, make it easy for me to go back and like rewatch them, like all those kinds of things. And if not, like then I won't find them good, but that really depends. So you can either be really lucky and only have lectures that like really suit you or you can be really unlucky and don't have any lectures that suit you. Generally, you'll be somewhere in the middle. You'll have some that you'll love, some that you'll hate, some that are kind of eh, not too bad. So yeah, quality of the lectures, like on average, fine. And then some are really good and some are the ones that I tend to not go to because they're just bad, you know? So yeah, that's all I can say on that. I hope this helped at all for any of you out there, any prospect students to Leiden University, specifically international studies or people who go to, who will go to campus, The Hague. I also, someone else asked me if there were any other YouTubers at Leiden University that they could check out. Now, I don't know any, but if you guys know some, leave them in the comments down below because I mean, obviously I'm here to support other YouTubers and I think it would be helpful for you guys if you get to see a different perspective from the school because I'm in The Hague and maybe there's someone that can show us the perspective of what it's like in Leiden, I don't know. So if you ha happen to know one, I don't think there are any, but if there are, let them know, like help each other out. You'll possibly be classmates next year. So, you know, you can start making friends here. And if you have any other questions for me, as always, leave them in the comments down below. I would love to help you guys further. I can make another video if it is required. And you can also DM me on Instagram. I will always respond as soon as I see the question and I'll try to help you as much as I can. If I didn't answer your question, I either missed it or I probably don't know the answer to it because I don't know everything, I'm sorry. <laughs> so yeah, but leave them in the comments down below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button down below and I will see you in my next video. Bye. And we're done.